This video was created by Vinylic Puma of Vinylic Puma Gaming. What is going on everybody? This is Vinylic Puma and I'm getting this video up a lot later than I originally wanted to, but due to some things with Steam and Bethesda uh, getting signals crossed, it took me like 2 hours and 30 minutes to download the DLC that should have been downloaded at midnight when it was supposed to release. But I finally have got the DLC and I'm going to go ahead and try to evaluate and do kind of like a review slash impressions of whether the Contraptions Workshop DLC for Fallout 4 is worth the money or not. One quick thing here before we get into this particular video, um, I am not somebody that is particularly crazy about the settlement building system in Fallout 4. It's not to say that I don't like it, it's just not the reason that I play Fallout 4. Uh, I mostly play Fallout 4 for the campaign DLCs, um, which is something that I would have actually have liked to have seen. Um, but it is what it is, and Bethesda Game Studios plans their stuff out. But Let's go ahead here and we'll talk about this DLC. So the first question is, what is the Contraptions Workshop DLC? And of course, like the Wasteland Workshop DLC, this is simply a collection of useful settlement building assets. Um, unfortunately, there are no new quests, missions, and no new weapons that were added, which is honestly a shame as I personally would have preferred another campaign DLC. However, it is worth mentioning, they did do some cool things with weapons, which I'll get into later on in this particular video. And unlike the Wasteland Workshop DLC, the Contraptions DLC is more focused on building like Rube Goldberg machines, uh, conveyor belts, and just some other interesting things. Alright, so we'll go ahead here and we'll talk about some of the useful settlement building objects that were added with the Contraptions Workshop DLC. And the first thing I want to talk about is the elevators. So, the Contraptions Workshop DLC now allows the player to build two-story, three-story, and four-story elevators in their settlements. Uh, this makes it easier to navigate and build taller structures, um, as well as get to the top of places like Red Rocket without the need of like power armor jetpacks. And in my opinion, this is a nice feature. Um, of course, they also added these boxcars, uh, which are a quick alternative to building larger scale buildings out of like wood, steel, or concrete, respectively. Um, personally, I like these as you can just put these together quickly and it mostly just costs steel and wood resources. And the other advantage of the boxcars is that you don't have to spend a lot of time building your very own house uh, to just put your settlers in to stick beds in. And I kind of like that about the boxcars. Um, now, the cool thing about the Contraptions Workshop DLC are the manufacturing pieces. And these consist mostly of a combination of conveyor belts and machinery, which allow you to build a wider variety of things like trinkets or just like some junk items. Uh, you can build weapons with these. You can manufacture food. You can build ammo, clothing, and more. And as you can imagine, in, in my humble opinion, this is actually a really cool feature. Um, the only thing that bugs me about it is that it does take a while to initially set up and the resources aren't directly tied to what in your uh, workshop bench. Uh, so this means that you have to go to your workbench, uh, you have to take the items and the resources you need out and then place them in the manufacturing device in order for it to start manufacturing specific items. Now I do see why Bethesda Game Studios did this and I think it's a good idea because um, the way the machinery works is that it will constantly keep producing unless you turn the devices off. Uh, and if you drew from your workshop bench, there is the potential to deplete all of the resources that you have at that specific settlement. I really do like ammo production in particular as you can basically take resources that are fairly common like copper steel and fertilizer and you can make bullets for some of your weapons and each time like it'll have like two steel or like one fertilizer to create something like a uh, five millimeter rounds and it creates 10 each time and that goes for all the weapon types so if you wanted to build two millimeter electromagnetic ammo um, this might be the easiest way to acquire it as you can simply build it with crafting resources with one of these 
manufacturing conveyor belt things. And honestly, I think that's really cool. They also added these firework mortars and provided you craft weather change cells. At one of your chemistry stations, you can change the in-game weather to make it either like clear uh, weather, you can make it rain, and then of course you can make it have like a spontaneous rad storm. And this is actually really useful because I don't like rad storms, and now I have a way to change the weather um, to make it either clear or just make it like it's raining outside. And in my opinion, that's pretty neat. Now they did add display racks, and of course they have a wide variety of just like display racks for weapons uh, you have like cases for like just random things that you find in the world as well as you have like mannequins and you have power armor stands uh, that are illuminated um, so you can display some of your favorite weapons, uh, just non-power armor and power armors as well. And these function in a similar way to how mannequins and weapon racks work in Skyrim. And as far as I can tell, these seem to work. Uh, you just need to remember for the mannequins uh, to place the items that you want to equip onto the mannequin in the mannequin's inventory and then go to the mannequin's inventory and then hit equip and that's how it works where i think in skyrim you just like placed it on there and it worked but it's it's more steps but it does work and i actually think it works pretty well now so far it appears that weapon racks can only store one weapon regardless of the size and some weapons don't display at the center due to you guessed it good old Bethesda bugs. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this DLC was focused primarily around building Rube Goldberg machines for the player to have fun and just mess around with. Um, and while I didn't get the time to put together a really cool looking Rube Goldberg creation, uh, the potential for that is definitely here. Uh, there are pieces that they added like logic gates, which transmit power to objects when certain conditions are met. They also added some ball tracks, which can be used in your Rube Goldberg machines. Um, they also added traps that will either shoot bullets or paintballs and with the proper positioning you can place these to hit switches that can activate other devices. And overall there's also more stuff that I'm not really getting into here. Um, it's best that you check them out for yourself as I'm personally not a huge enthusiast for the settlement crafting system myself. Um, it's not like I don't like it at all, uh, but I'd rather focus on challenge playthroughs like survival mode, etc, etc. And then if I wanted to do some crafting stuff, I'd probably download some mods. But now I'm just going to go ahead and give you some of my thoughts on the Contraptions Workshop DLC. And the first thing is that the weapon racks are still glitchy like they were in Skyrim. Um, I've noticed it isn't all weapons, and it may change depending on the weapon rack that you have. Um, but personally, um, I feel like there are mods out there already that accomplish this task and do it much better. That said, the mannequins and the power armor displays seem to work very well as far as I can tell. Uh, between the two, I really like the display mannequins for conventional armor. Um, for certain armor sets, it almost looks like you're looking at a frozen person in place, and if you're walking up to them from like a considerable distance, you might con you might confuse them for an actual person. Uh, now, the power armor stands are sort of okay. They just illuminate when you have them powered or you have them hooked up to like a uh, power device. Um, now, I really like the conveyor belts and the manufacturing pieces that come with the Contraptions Workshop DLC. Uh, they provide an additional use for computer terminals, and you can craft with them. Uh, and you can basically make things like ammo, weapons, clothing, food, and just some other things. You can actually also make some explosives if you're into that. Now, the manufacturing pieces are a little awkward at first, but you will get used to dedicating specific resources to place in your manufacturing manufacturing device uh, from your workbench. So you basically can just go over to your workbench, you take the resource that you need, and then you just put them in the manufacturing device, uh, you hit some buttons, and then it, you're suddenly creating some ammo or whatever you wanted to make. I also like the introduction of fireworks and firework mortars that can be used to alter the weather. Um, I've never liked rad storms, and this gives me the option to remove them in a more quote-unquote immersive way. Um, and like I've said when I reviewed or gave my impressions 
of the Wasteland Workshop, I definitely prefer campaign or mission DLC experiences that add weapons as well as crafting components. Uh, the crafting components that are added here are certainly not bad, um, but some of these can be accomplished with PC mods. And now that consoles are progressively getting mods, uh, who's to say that they couldn't use similar mods two or three months down the road. With that in mind, let's go ahead here and we will answer whether this DLC is worth it for you to buy. Now, in my opinion, this is going to be a nice DLC for PS4 players. However, given that mods are already on Xbox One and are slowly coming to PS4 within the next month or two, uh, Contraption's DLC may be replaced by both console and PC mods. On the one hand, I think if you already have have the season pass and you paid $30 for it, uh, then I don't think you're really overpaying for this. However, if you paid $50 or, or you've been buying each DLC individually, uh, you may be inclined to skip. Um, and for people that bought the DLC at $30, um, I think many of us would have rather Bethesda not make any of the Wasteland Workshop DLCs and simply just make one big DLC that was estimated at like a $15 value. Maybe sort of like an Automatron DLC uh, plus, if you will. Um, now, if you have the season pass, uh, well, you do have contraptions. Uh, if you don't have it, consider whether you're into the settlement building system or not. If so, it could be worth it to you Otherwise, I'd recommend that you skip. Anyway, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. And as always, take care and I'll see you all next time.